I just gotta ask you this: like, what were you like as a kid in school? Because I imagine you you had to be a teacher's nightmare. You can't stay still. <laughs> Why could you? Uh, <laughs> See, dunk. I, well, I am a, I was a teacher like nightmare completely, but at the same time, I was like, I was a perfect student because I slept and I was always quiet. So, oh, like I slept through pretty much all my high school and college career. Like I went to class and I would just fall asleep, and my teachers would ask me some stuff, and I'd be like, uh, yeah, and I'll answer the question, and then they'll leave me alone. I'm like, fuck, why can't we ever just get you to do something that was wrong? It's like. Because I'm awesome. I've studied before I came to class. What's <laughs> well, the point of it? Like, can, I, you, can you confirm that Greg found you in Chuck E. Cheese? Yes. Please uh, confirm Greg did, that. Yeah, Greg Jackson did find me at Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, Crystal Trill actually found me there. Huh? Crystal Trill? He's, uh, okay, he's, he's one of Greg Jackson's. He found you? Yeah, he's one of Greg Jackson's first black belts. Yeah. I was doing his son Jack's birthday party. What were you doing? Like I was a... Uh, Read the mouse? No, I was actually the host for his birthday party. And I saw a bunch of these guys there, and there were all these... Uh, uh, all these uh, state Fighter. troop well no they're state troopers and police officers yeah. and they pointed at me and they're like hey and I was like oh shit and they're like what and I was like they're like you're John Dotson I was like yeah what did I do and that was like first thing in my head and I was like man I know I might have done something to get in trouble I knew one of these days of beating up somebody <laughs> in the street was going to get me in trouble and they're like hey where are you going to school and I was like oh I'm going to go to UNM they're like really well, like, haven't you started graduating? It's like, no, like, I'm almost graduated from, uh, from high school. I'm taking college courses right now. But I'm going to go to UNM because I'm going to go to school for computer engineering and computer science. And they, everybody there had a blank face. It's like, what the hell is wrong with you? They're like, didn't you get offers for any athletic sports? I was like, yeah. I got scholarships for football, wrestling, and track. I got full rides for all three of them, but I just showed, turned them down. They're like, you're an idiot. I was like, no, I'm going to get eight grand a month. I mean, eight grand a semester to go to school at UNM because I got the engineering, I got lottery, and I was telling them, they're like, well, and then you're a smart man. I was like, yeah, but, like, but you know, edu like education is a foundation, and it's always gonna be there. It's never gonna change, so it can evolve here and there, but you can still learn, teach yourself how to learn. I was like, yeah. Like, what about your talent? Like, well, my talent is being awesome, being amazing, but you're not gonna have it forever. I was like, Touche. So they're like, come on, try this out. If you, if you like it, then go ahead and stay with it forever, and if not, then you can just go ahead and be the nerd for the rest of your life. I was like, Okay. And then you went to the gym. I went to the gym and uh, all said, no, I went to the gym and I was like, I out wrestled everybody and I was doing good. I was doing flips over people and I was doing backflips on them. And then got to the ground game and I started getting tapped out and I started making a hit list of everybody I want to beat up before I retire. I was so pissed off. I was like, I'm going to fuck, I was like, I'm going to fuck up everybody on this list and then I'm going to quit the sport. Sadly to say, majority of those people are already retired, so I have no chance of leaving the sport. So wait, when you said you said you were doing backflips over these guys when you were wrestling them, like you're just like freaking them out by flipping backwards over. Yeah, because they were grabbing my ankles and I was doing backflips and they were shooting forward on me like shooting double legs and I was doing front flips over the top of them. They're like, "What the hell is up with this dude? Like, why can't he just sit still?" It's like, "No, you're big." <laughs> like, the, like when I first went to Jackson's, I was like the smallest guy that, that was there, and the, the biggest person, you know, close, uh, the closest person to my weight was Diego Sanchez, and he was fighting at 170 at the time. Yeah. He's the king of the cage champion, and like he went on to the show like two years later after that for uh, the first Ultimate Fighter, and I was like, man, this is not happening. And uh, sparring with all these giants made me uh, makes me realize why I wanted to become that, that champion in those so many uh, so many weight classes. Like if I can deal with those guys back then, and they're still today the great step, and still so much of the UFC's history, I can do it right now.